This is Happy Monkey. This is Happy Monkey. Happy Monkey. Good morning, good morning, Happy Monkey TV. It is a beautiful rainy day outside. <laughs> Make sure you guys smoke your bowls, pies, joints, blood, duchess. This is Chris Wolf in the building. Use water when you're rolling. Be careful, wash your hands when you're coming in. Stay safe, guys. Alright, 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 ladies and gentlemen out there in Happy Monkey World. Welcome to the podcast with Vlad and Ramon yes, on sir. the boulevard where we give you all the current news and updates on the cannabis world and society as in as we see it through our cannabis lens. Yes, yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the boulevard. We are here. We get uh down and dirty. We speak present past and future here cannabis climate and yeah this is what we do everybody we just let giving you a little glimpse of what's happening here in new york city what's happening right here ladies and gentlemen in new york city is that the coronavirus has the city oh, paralyzed uh, and paranoid <laughs> okay so we gotta talk about this corona we got to talk about the corona. Okay, so let's all right. I don't I want to give it too much light, but let's let's get let, let's run through this that real quick. So the coronavirus everybody, we already know what it is. Uh well, we don't know what it is specifically, is we just know that it's a virus and it's spreading like crazy and it's very well promoted throughout the media. So um uh, I don't know, everybody fucking well uh, these are the facts, right? Yeah. It's me- it's interfering with everybody's regular life. I'm going to you keep it on the eye, right? Me, myself. I was supposed to speak at South by Southwest. What happened? South by Southwest got canceled. Yeah. I was just talking with a friend of mine. One of his friends go to Pratt University. Yeah. The university got canceled for the rest of the semester. So it's affecting whether you believe in it or not. It's affecting right. it's you in aff- one way or another. It's affecting. It's affecting, I guess, the way the world is running at the moment. You know what I mean? Um, what I don't agree with is, well, not that I don't agree with. What I'm afraid is that they're just telling people to, like, kind of just wash your hands. Um, I think it should be more than that. You know what I mean? I, I don't think just washing your hands is going to prevent uh, a, a, a spread. No, I think you should be doing more. Like, I think everybody should be doing more. I think the MTA should be doing more, especially here in New York City. We are, we are Everybody lives off public transportation. So it's not like you can avoid these large, uh, um, crowded situations, but... With all this money that the MTA is getting, with all this money that the city generates, like, at least, you know, start implementing more cleaning, you know, for the fucking cabs, for the buses, for the trains. Um, people should be washing more than their hands. Wash your ass and wash your fucking crib. And I, I, like, I, 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 I believe <laughs> that part of the problem is that basically, you know what I mean? People are always ready for the worst in so many ways, and they weren't ready for this and I think everybody from public help to transportation to government are kind of, like, shell-shocked. Yeah, yeah. And they don't yeah. know how to react. Yeah. And they don't know whether to upplay it, downplay it, medium play it, and it's just causing everything to go crazy because nobody knows how to react because nobody no, knows. No, 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 no. You don't know, you know, the fear of the unknown. Never seen it before, so they don't know what to do. Another one that got canceled you're supposed to go to Nikan to Boston. Oh, yeah. The got canceled. Got canceled. So it's affected. Coachella just got pushed back six months. Wow. So this is affecting life in general. How about you're going to watch some NBA games, my friend Ralph, with the girls for the girls, and there's not going to be anybody in the audience. There's just going to be people playing. That doesn't even how about, make how sense. How about like, those apples? Like, 
That's like the whole, like, how about that? There's nobody going to be playing at any sport events. There's not going to be any fans. It's just going to be the people playing and people watching them on That's TV. That's crazy. I've seen a post. I've seen a post on Instagram. So let, let's not let's not hold this as factual facts because it's just a post. But I've seen I a s- post on, on Instagram where, where LeBron was, like, saying, was resisting. Like, yo, if there's no fans in the crowd, I don't even want to play ball because – that's like a whole part. That's the part of the energy. You know what I mean? You playing ball for the fans. So I don't know how that's going to go. You know, it's crazy. Uh, sad to say, ladies and gentlemen, they always make traveling so bad. But right now, if you want to travel, the flights are cheaper than ever. Wow, that shit crazy, man. That shit looking like. You could go to Paris, Ralph, for like $30 a flight right now, Ralph. Go <laughs> see the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> This shit looking grim. This the, the flights, man. I mean, who wants to fly right now? There's a lot of people not trying to fly at all. They're not really hearing that. It is crazy. I heard that they're still going through with Spanabitch. I don't know how that's gonna happen. Spanabitch is this is is coming up now, and they're saying they're gonna go through with it. But I don't think anybody's gonna be there. Spain borders Italy. Italy's the biggest affected place in the world aside from China. So I don't think that's gonna be a big attendance there. The, the, look, first of all, that's history right there. They stopped that. That's like, what do you mean? But they just stopped. Uh, they just stopped. Um, uh, South by Southwest, thirty-four years. They never stopped it. Uh, I mean, you know, we talking about a world event now. They gonna stop a world event? You that was a world the, event. South uh, by Southwest. We came from Olympics. The world. Like oh no, no, not the Olympics. I said Spanibus. Oh, but Spanibus, is, that's crazy. I just seen. Uh, isn't uh, our friend out there right now? He was like, yo, they gonna uh, they they're stopping a lot of the events. Yeah, and they go, they're going through with it, but they allegedly. But that's what I'm saying. I don't know who's gonna show up. They are contemplating. Try, they're trying to go through with the Olympics, but I don't know. It's the same thing. Like you know, you got You need an audience. It's crazy, man. But right now, I just I don't know. The advice to tell people is like I said, man, do more than wash your hands. <laughs> you know, uh, make sure your kids is nice and clean before they got out into the street. You don't want your kids getting sick. You know, there's a lot of shit. That we just don't know about this virus. You know what I mean? It's very... How about there's no test kits? They don't really have a yes. lot of test kits ready for us. You know, that's, you yes. know. Um, so you really don't even know how many people yeah. really have it. Right. So I just think this is very, very well promoted as far as the fear factor. I think they should start promoting more, like, you know, how to take care. I know they don't know as much as we think, but as, you know, start promoting, like, the, the way to, to care for yourself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because I think that that's the separation right there. The, the separation is that the media is the one promoting it because that's the media's game. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. what they do. They, they, they fear, fear, the, fear is big business. Yeah. So uh, the government, which is the ones that are supposed to be giving people the precautions and the, they're, they're downplaying it. And that's why they're not giving people all the, the, the sp- specific advice that they need to protect themselves because they're trying to downplay it. Crazy. If they man. would just admit it, be like, oh, there's right. a problem. Let's just try to contain let's, let's it. Solve it. Right. Let's solve it. But they're like, they're trying to do the opposite. So it, it might and they're making it worse. You, okay. Yeah, man. Because, I mean, we're adults. Tell adults how to, <laughs> exactly. you know, what's the problem and we, let's figure it out, right? But that's not what's happening. And there's a lot of fear going on. You know, from what I see and what I hear, I, I see that there's a lot of like, uh, a lot of cases in Italy right now. You know, I mean, hope is, you know, we don't know. We don't know. The whole thing is that we don't know, guys. So fucking take care of yourself. Um, if this is a good time to bundle up and get your weed pack and smoke and watch some <laughs> Netflix and chill. Yeah. It's one of those times. Stay out the way. There you go. And shit like that, man. You know, but, you know, let's not live in fear. No. Um, Living in fear just fucks up your immune system anyway, stress levels and all that shit. So you know. Caution is one thing, fear is another. It makes no sense to be in fear. It's just good to be cautious. Right, right. You know, because there's a lot of viruses and diseases that are killing people but by the daily, you know what I mean? And we're, we're, I don't see the big scare to that. Not saying that we shouldn't be scared of this virus. I'm just saying that, you know, just let's, let's just promote more of the wellness and how to take care of yourself and how to, like, you know, do that. And cleanliness is less to godliness, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, I guess. Now, let's talk about some positive cannabis news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Us, yeah. Happy Monkey LLC, will be gearing up for <laughs> 420 2020, which will be a 30 day extravaganza of 
or 20 for the first time all month. Absolutely. What do you think about that? I think it's going to be crazy, man. You know what I mean? It's 420 for like the whole month, right? Um, yes. I think we are gearing up to drop some major historic podcasts. Uh, episodes. I think our YouTube channel is going to be crazy because we got more monkey sessions coming out. We got a lot of unreleased interviews from Steve D'Angelo, um, uh, Spanish artists like Tally Goya. We got a lot of like um, different influencers that we haven't released out into the public yet. So we got like these last two years of content of filming and pictures and just different uh, events that we went to, different situations. The fundraiser, the last prisoner project we did, we didn't we didn't release that. So you know, there's a lot of things that we gonna release for for April. April's gonna get crazy with it, man. I think, yes, I think, yes, yes, yes. We're gonna have we're, a lot we're, of fun. Gonna sh- you're gonna see a side of Happy Monkey that you guys never seen before. No, no, no. We're gonna um also be having a lot of different uh, concepts. We're going out with uh, Man on the Street and. A bunch of different other surprises we got for you guys. Absolutely. So stay tuned Absolutely. because Absolutely. we are going into Happy Monkey 2.0. Absolutely. So basically, um, what we were talking about off air a little bit. So Happy Monkey likes to showcase uh, New York City cannabis mm-hmm. culture. You know what I mean? We like to showcase that. We want to showcase um, the imagery that, that people don't really see on the all the time so that's pretty much more our thing and that's um that's what's gonna happen we're gonna have concerts music concerts where we're able to showcase uh dope female artists who who have who have no problem being uh, openly in love with cannabis um and just a lot of artists in that manner we a lot of up-and-coming new york artists um also uh we bring in the formula we have all female dj formula so it's, it's, it's a lot of things that we want to bring out that we, we weren't being able to, to do before. But now uh, we're definitely going to do that. We're going to show off all the things that we couldn't do before. We're definitely going to show it now. Um, uh, hold up. Explain that button. Yeah, man. So. Look out for Monkey Munchies, where oh. we're going to be displaying a lot of the hot spots where... You know, people like to go get their little food on after they get high. A little personal places that yes, we sir. think places think that we are we think are the best places to go get your munchies at in New York City. Absolutely. So it's like I said, you know, it's gonna be Happy Monkey two point You know, we're gonna unveil another layer and another curtain of a little bit of the New York City culture and lifestyle for yes, the cannabis sir. consumer. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes. Been a, it's been a wonderful ride, to be honest. I can't complain. Um, we've met a lot of great people. I think it's just now the time we were able to show- showcase all these great people. Um, I want to I want to mention we just recently added a major piece to Happy Monkey. We just recently uh, partnered up with uh, Stu Zackham, our PR and com- me communications and marketing person. Absolutely. So shout out to him for to believing in the movement and rocking with us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're definitely going to be moving in different, uh, lo- uh, not locations, but we're going to be uh, seeing a lot of different uh, podcasts. You're going to see us in a lot of different interviews. People are going to talk to us a little bit more. I know you don't get to hear a lot about us, um, but we're going to give other people the opportunity to get to hear about us. So, you, you know, stay tuned. We are, we actually started already in December with uh, Latinos Out Loud podcast. So yes. definitely shout out to them. Look out for them and their podcast. Uh, Rachel uh, and the crew, you know what I mean? Mad cool. Um, we go go on a little podcast tour, to be honest, man. We, it's, it's, we go be out there. Happy Monkey everywhere. Happy Monkey's outside. We go be in all the concerts. No. I, I want to give a big shout out to New England. We were recently out there for the NCIA, and they showed us so much love and you know very I mean? welcoming. And, and very we had welcoming. an event up there, and so many people came out and uh, really appreciate you guys. A lot of people don't know they're doing a lot of amazing things up there in the absolutely, cannabis industry. Absolutely. And you know, it's just like New York, they don't get a lot of light. But shout out to them for you know doing what they do. Absolutely, bro. Yo, first of all, well, well, I want people to understand. Not people, yo, y'all smokers. Maine right now is growing the super fire. 
That is correct. That is crazy. And you know, we've you know, we've seen a lot of fire, man. I've I smoked think they a lot of different got the, weed. The best in the East Coast. I think right now, you know, I, I think between Maine and Maryland right now, yo, it's crazy, bro. Like while we were there in Boston, like I said, like, you know, like he said, we was doing the and the NCIA and you know, the little after parties and the hangouts afterwards, you know, people get to show out, you know, everybody pull out their private stash and you know, we all smoke together. And the main guys, bro, brought some fire, man. And it was and, and I wouldn't I don't wanna name like a specific company because it was like just like a few guys from Maine and it's just shit a like that. general. I just yeah, think so, out a you know lot of I mean? stuff. They popping out a lot of good stuff. A you lot know, of good stuff. A lot of good man. stuff. I think um we had a really good time, and I felt very welcomed with the New England family, um, you know? So shout-out to everybody over there in Boston, Massachusetts, and because in Massachusetts that, in general. I think that in New England, well, the reason that they got it going like that is because they have a lot of, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, kind of like small, really high-concentrated grows more than like, because it's me. We all know that it's hard to keep quality when you start scaling up too much. Right. So I think since they have like a lot of niche collectibles and stuff like that, that's why they're pumping out the fire that they are. Because mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Once you start scaling up, it, it gets hard to keep that same quality as we all know. Yeah, man. So shout out to them. They got the stupid fire, man. And you know, and not for nothing, brother. You know, I want to congratulate you real quick before we move forward and congratulate us. I say because this podcast, you know, is our first uh, endeavor in some sort of media, uh, personally yeah, for me and you. Definitely. So you know, the fact that we've kept this going and you know we, we're here coming out our show a little bit. We got my boy with the curls for the girls you over know? here, but in the back, in the back, you in know, making back, all the magic happen. You know. So, you know, you know, we don't, you know, like I said, this is this is uh, a show where we should be giving out flowers while we around and where we while we doing it. Right. So, you know, I'm giving out some flowers to you, my friend, and to Ralph as well for putting up with me and you, my brother. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. And, yeah, you know, you want to, you, you know, you can change the subject if you want to keep moving forward. But I had to say something to y'all. Nah, definitely, you know, man. Thank it's you just, guys for, you it's, know. It's just that, you know, we have up this. Me uh, too. We have this uh, the the mentality that we have in the Happy Monkey Company is that it's like a football team, you know. We we all are just you know believing in the same thing and trying to get this championship for the team, you know. And we are all moving forward and and you know in sync and trying to do the best we can to make this come to fruition and shed light on the New York City culture. And you know it's long overdue that we have the highest consuming city in the world and the least media presence. Yeah, that's crazy. So, you know, yeah, we had to do something, I guess. We had to take it a little bit in our own hands and, you know, shout out shout out to International P, you know. Oh, he's the one that put the battery in our yeah, back. Yeah, huh? so, you know, shout out to International P. We got a lot of unreleased interviews from him. You know, he, he, he was, uh, you know, the person who pretty much started this for me and Vlad, as far as media wise, you know, he's he, he's our host on the, all the interviews that we got. Um, shout out to that crazy young it's man. It's just that uh, you know <laughs> him being his history in the entertainment business, he saw what we were doing, and you know we were so caught up in the moment. He said, "All this has to be documented." And at the moment, I saw it a little better, but now looking back, like thank God we listened to him. Yeah, man, and we got to document a lot of fucking important moments, bro. Come on, bro. We we got to document a moment on the rooftop with Steve D'Angelo, Kevin Smith, you know, uh, Mr. Lang. Uh, the, uh, Michael, Lang Michael Lang, the founder of Woodstock. Founder of Woodstock. You know, this is like moment, like that's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know how many, I don't know how many people could tell you them stories right there. You know what I mean? Smoking on the rooftop with them three, you know, so that's kind of crazy. Now look like it just went from fun and games to now, you know, we got like an Omni media cannabis lifestyle brand to like, you know what I mean? Now, you know, we're doing after parties for cannabis conferences, you know, it's snowballed into so much, you know what I mean? And it's just been like a roller coaster ride. It's been a roller coaster ride. All thanks to the, the, the man, the creator that saw the vision and saw that you know what i mean it was this culture was missing in new york city mr ramon thank you man <laughs> you know i just helped you you know what i mean bring it home because it's just like you're the one that had the vision oh man i just i just i just felt like like new york needed 
not needed. We were already doing it. It, it, it had nothing to do with me. We were already doing it. People but nobody, were already, nobody thought it was anything special because everybody from here thought it was normal, but everywhere outside of here, just like everything else, is not normal. It's not normal, man. And and New Yorkers were smoking at, are smoking at a fast pace and and it's like nothing like you know it's like a, it's like a person smokes his cigarette and keeps it moving the person smokes his joint and keeps it moving go to work go to school and that's it and then there's a, this 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 just this is like you said there's a lot of people here there is enough people here that just want to smoke. They don't even want to drink. They're not even trying to get into the rowdiness. They just want to smoke and get into the vibes of smokers and what are smokers doing? What's going on with the smokers? So that's what I kind of saw. I saw there was a platform where people want to see what smokers from New Yorkers are doing. Like, what Like what do you guys do? Like, you know what I mean? Because it's crazy. Like, in every other aspect, in every other industry, every the world knows that New York is one of the most influential places but with cannabis, nobody really looked at it that way. No. Where everything else is, is like a given with this, nobody saw it that way. So we came along, and now we have the honor and the pleasure because we know we all aspire to inspire to shed light on all the other people doing amazing things in the tri-state area and highlight them and, you know, and, exactly. and, and, you know, give them some light and show the world what they're doing because there's a lot of people in the tri city that are doing amazing things. Just yes, yes. the rest of the country and the world doesn't know about it. Nope, nope, no, 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 nope. And, you know, I just, I, I just felt like the energy was already here. We just needed to bottle it up or package it up or bag it up, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, let's just give it to the people however we can and however it comes out, man. And, you know, like I said, shout out to International P that he kind of saw the energy, you know what I mean? He felt it and, you know, he was like, guys, like... Because, you know, what? Well, he told me something that uh, I never forget. He said, um, if you don't document it, then it didn't happen. It's just right. a folktale. It's just a folktale. It's just something that we pass on as stories and it's like you know what uh here you go guys you know? <laughs> exactly um and now like i said you know i mean it's inspiring so many other people to, that look like us and come from communities like we come from to know that it's feasible for them too because you know what i mean anything we could do they could do you absolutely, know absolutely absolutely man and we we had the pleasure to act to, like you just said to bring a lot of these people to light um, you guys check out, check out the YouTube channel. We're gonna be releasing a lot of interviews from a lot of different people. If you go back on our podcast, we have a multiple and eclectic group of people on the podcast list. Like it's crazy. Like it's not just you don't just get um, uh, somebody just from the hood what they would expect, right? But you get. Um, the stock exchange people from Canada, you know what I mean? You got, oh, we, we have all sorts of people that you wouldn't believe that would sit down with me and Vlad, smoke joints, have a laugh. Like, you know, it's a good, you know. That's why, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm going to rephrase it. I always mention it over and over again, but I'm going to break it down in a different way today. See, part of the reason that we do what we do here on the podcast is that we did our due diligence on both sides of the industries, meaning like, the culture is obvious to us. We come from that. Yes. And then we lasted the last three years doing our, you know, due diligence on the corporate. And basically, we feel like we're the nexus between cannabis culture and cannabis corporate. But what it really comes down to, guys, is humanity. They are amazing human beings and souls exactly. on both sides. It's just that they both just don't interact as much. And I feel like we just bring the best of both sides and sat them at these, sat them in front of these microphones and let you know, yeah. let the world see you know their perspectives and and the opposite of what they thought about both of them. We proved it by having them here. People assume that corporate is supposed to be one way. And when you sit and you talk to them, it's not. You, you expect the culture to be one way, and then you sit down. You, you sit down and you speak to them, and it's not yeah. what people assume. So we just kind of like you know just basically like you know bring the amazing human beings from folks from both sides and Absolutely. bring them here where we're like in the middle and like you know let the world see what this what what it's about you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, and now we're here. 
on a podcast talking with shit. With my nigga Curl, with my nigga Ralph with the curls for the, <laughs> the girls. girls. <laughs> if you guys haven't checked it out, we also have a newsletter that comes out once a month, Ooh. which highlights a lot of what's going on with us, what's going on in the cannabis industry, yes, in the yes, culture. Yes, yes, yes. And my brother from another mother, Ralph, has a, a walk, a blunt walk little series that he does on there Absolutely. where he walks around different areas because like Ramon said, you know, New York is different. You either got to go to the staircase, you got to go to the hallway, or you go on a walk Fuck. like Ralph does. Yeah, and you know, and follow him on his journeys, you'll see some dope-ass photogra- uh photos and some lovely, lovely stills, you know what I mean? So definitely check that out. You can find it on www.happymonkeywithau.com. You can find every platform that we have there, uh, podcasts, YouTube, newsletter, merch. Definitely get on the merch because now we go. We got the rolling trays, grinders, all the good stuff, the limited pins. Um, I don't even think we got a lot of that left, so definitely order that. Uh, we definitely got some new merch coming out for the summer. Um, it's going to get crazy, guys. Uh, definitely thank you for the love, the support, um, the DMs, the text messages, the subscribes. Everything. How about the voicemail? The you didn't even voicemails. tell them about the voicemails. Oh. Definitely call us on 347-770-1929. Uh, leave a voicemail. Leave a crazy-ass voicemail. Leave a silly voicemail. Tag yourself, whatever you want to say. Uh, show us love we'll feature it on the next podcast because that's what we use those voicemails for we're posted on the instagram definitely reach out to us if you did leave us a voicemail and you want to get tagged um we definitely will post you you definitely get on the podcast uh thank you very very much everybody I, uh, again we're honored pleasure a lot of love is felt for our ride or die supporters and that was the other thing, too, that we forgot to go over that part of the the reason for the event we did at NECAN up in Boston was the relaunch of our website. So if you guys get a chance, check it out because we love feedback and we want to know what we can do better, what you like, what you don't like. So exactly. please check it out, www.happymonkeywithau.com, and let us know what you like, what you don't like. Leave a comment because basically... We are just the voice for the people, you know. We, you know, we're not doing anything exaggeratedly special. We just feel like we're just harnessing all of what the cannabis culture is over here in the East Coast and just giving it a platform for the for the world, you know, to, to show what the the mentality and the New York cannabis state of mind. Uh, yeah. So everybody, you know. And like, like Ramon said, you know what I mean? Uh, we're humbled, you know what I mean? Especially me, myself, by the amount of love that we get from people from all over the country and all over the world. Thank you guys for believing in us and for always rocking with us, you know what I mean? And for, you know, really uh, helping us see that, you know, we are making a difference in this cannabis industry and in the culture. And, you know, for tuning in and hearing what we got to say because we know you guys could be anywhere in the world and you're here with us and we appreciate you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you already know, ladies and gentlemen, yes, yes, yes. enjoy the rest of the podcast as we go back to the boulevard. The boulevard. All right, all right, all right, everybody. We are here on the Happy Monkey Podcast today on the Boulevard. You know, we, to, you know, you know how we do. You know, sometimes we bring uh, the culture, sometimes we bring the corporate. You know, but we like to bring the natives all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because we love to represent New York in this motherfucker. So that's what we like to do. You know, today we got. A special lady here today, everybody. A boss lady, because you know we like to bring boss people here. You know what I'm saying? Today we got Miss Alistina Gosan. Everybody, can we please have her on? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, Thank, you Thank you for Thank having you for me. Thank you for having boulevard. me. 
Thank you for Ramona having me. Fly. So please reintroduce yourself. Tell people where they can find you on the Instagram. Tell people what you do before we even go into that. Go ahead. Okay. I'm Elastina Gosign, CEO and founder of Massage Vibes. I am the first CBD massage therapist in New York, practicing out loud and f- for everybody to, uh, you know, partake. Um, my Instagram is at massage underscore vibes. And my personal Instagram is at Elastina underscore LMT. Good, good, good. So you just said that you're the first LMT. Can you please elaborate when you say that you're the first? Because that's, <laughs> that's a broad and bold <laughs> statement here in New York because there's a lot of people saying they're doing this, but you saying you're the first. Well, I mean, I'm going to give the recognition to New York one because mm-hmm. they did a little piece on me in 2015. Okay. And they okay. Pe- they pegged me the only cannabis massage therapist in New York City. Ooh. But back then, that was Yeah, the basically. That, what, yeah. what publication was this? New York One. New York One, New baby. York one. You can't New get York more one. New York than that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Right? <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so they pegged me the the only cannabis massage therapist in New York. So I, you know, put it on my Instagram, took it and ran with it because it was the facts then. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've recently changed it to the first because clearly, you know, CBD has made quite a growth spurt here. So aside from the whole CBD aspect, how long have you been a masseuse in general? Oh, since 2001. And massage therapist, because masseuse is like the negative connotation. Okay. Uh, okay. See, so when you speak to a... LMT, they usually like to be called massage therapists. Thank you for correcting us on that. Absolutely. LMT the, the means ma- you went to school for it. Thank right. you. Therapy. Right. That's what I tell people. I ain't pay all that money to give rub outs. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> I would have did that for free. So now you're going on 20 years then being a massage therapist. Mm-hmm. Yep. So then that's good because massage therapy was already a passion and something you were doing before the CBD came about. How did you stumble upon and decide that this was a niche that needed to be filled and that you know that, you know, this is something that the community needed? Well, um, because I like weed, so I was trying to figure out how to do both, Mm -hmm. right? Smoke weed and do massage. And then my grandmother was suffering with arthritis. She was 100 at the time. So I was trying to figure out how to get her to smoke weed, and she wouldn't obviously do that right so um i tried i started making her tea and she was doing grandma that. wasn't with it yeah, yeah she wasn't with the weed so she i started making her tea and she didn't really like that either so i was like i, I mean i gotta figure it out and mm-hmm. i started working with oils and trying to figure out how to massage her with um cannabis right and originally i was using straight weed like buying mad weed and just infusing it and you know right. but i couldn't get the scent out and that was killing yeah, her she, she ain't like that, that. Yeah. and it was staining everything not for nothing yeah, the, as yeah. a massage therapist, if all your sheets are stained, nobody wants to lay down, you know? <laughs> so how did you come up with this magical concoction you have now? Trial and error and research like a mug. So mm-hmm. I knew exactly how I wanted it to feel, the viscosity of it all, because I've been doing massage since 2001. So I've, I've used a lot of massage oils. Yeah. So um, I, and, and 2015, when I started doing CBD massage, I was using other people's products. And, I, and they didn't have massage oils available. They just had essential oils, and they had creams, and they had salves. It wasn't really a massage oil out there. So I was like, it gotta, I got to figure out how to do this. And um, I just researched, and I figured out I wanted to use as little uh, ingredients as possible. What do you think about, I read on your, on your, on your ingredients, there's four main ingredients. <laughs> Why did you run with those four main ingredients out of all the ones out there? Uh, Because each one of them actually does stuff all by itself to help with your body, your muscles, your skin. Uh, They they, together they have a SPF of twenty three already naturally. Like you know, and then together, what happens is emu oil. This is real technical, so I'm gonna make it less technical, right? So emu oil has this power where it just takes whatever's next to it and makes it like a bubble. And emu oil also has the power to penetrate the deepest layers of your skin. So basically, it's taking everybody all the way down into your low tissue, down mm-hmm. to the cartilage and everything. So it can take the CBD and the coconut oil and the avocado oil and the emu, which is also very good for inflammation. And they all have anti-inflammation properties. Put them together, magic. Magic. Literally like magic. What would you say some of the biggest ailments and things that some of your clients have said has helped them with? Um, arthritis, firstly. Um, eczema psoriasis, menstrual cramps, headache, back pain, stiff neck, 
uh, knee pain. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I'm going to have to try this soon. I got a lot of those <laughs> situations going on. I need to get it together before yeah. I fall apart over here. Yeah, I got to get you on the table. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes definitely. <laughs> so I'm going to throw y'all off a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. So today, well, may, well, yesterday, you know, I'm getting in contact with Jake because that's what put us in contact right. with each other, right? So I'm like, yo, Jake, you know, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of women in the industry here in New York that uh, we want to talk to, but we need to talk to someone who's into, like, who's uh, actually a, a massage therapist and that's doing CBD, right? He's like, I got you, man, I got you. He sends he sends over your name. I, I, you know, I was specific. I was like, yo, black. <laughs> so he sends over your name. I'm like, did you just send me this Jewish lady? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is what did you do, bro? Yeah, I'm like, did, you know, LS, I'm like, Elastina, go sign. That's a, did you, he's like, no, brother, that's, yeah, that's, that's a sister, man. Yeah, like, you know. It was real funny, but I'm like, all right, come on, let's do it, man, because I love to talk to boss ladies, man, and this is what we wanted to do. <laughs> so it's imp- it's important for us, like you know, like we were talking just before we was on air that, mm-hmm. you know, that we, you know, we bring someone who represents that, and you basically are pretty much the package. And he sent it to us in like two seconds. He's like, Yo, go talk to my home girl, man. Yeah, because right now, since it's Black History Month and next month is Women's Month, we want to have a lot of minorities and, and a lot of as many females as possible that represent the culture and the industry. Well, I'm honored. Thank you. I feel special for real. I mean, and it's a big deal. I really do take pride in the fact that I'm a woman of color doing something that's outside of the realm of what's normal. Because even when I started doing massage, it wasn't normal for my neighborhood. You know what yeah. I mean? Everybody was like, ooh, you do massage, you right, know? Right, And then eventually it, it caught on that this is health. Uh, yeah. I'm in the health field. I'm doing something for You're people. In the holistic industry. Yeah, industry. I'm doing yeah. wellness. That's right. what I'm all about. So. Absolutely. So now the CBD just added to that bonus. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's and I'm going to be saying. honest with you, like, from my personal opinion, you know, me and Ramon done a lot of due diligence in the industry. You know, we go to a lot of the corporate events and see what's going, kind of get a pulse of what's going on. Um, sometimes it's re- we've seen a lot of people be successful when they find their niche and they stick to it instead of, like, trying to follow what everybody else is doing. So I'm pretty confident that you're going to be wildly successful if you continue your journey. Thank you. Thank you. That's the plan. I mean, I really just feel like the oil is so good that it can help so many people. That's the plan, period. Like, I don't want to... And then I really want to focus on, like, the older crowd because, Mm -hmm. like, they don't really know what's available to them and they really don't want to take drugs. Well, you know, it's crazy that the numbers say that the number one medical consumers for medical issues is the older crowd. Yeah, Yeah. for for new consumers. They're the most new consumers out. Yeah, and they, um, you know, they just want to feel better. Mm Mm-hmm. And without having to take pills. Yeah. Exactly. Man, them, exactly. Them, them pills that get them drugged up for hours. Yeah, my cousin hours. actually had double knee replacement, and instead of taking her drugs, she took she bought a couple of bottles, and she just used it every day, every day, every day. And she said it really helped her and made, her, you know, made it so she can get around. And my, um, my, my uh, boyfriend's mom has diabetes, so she has, like, restless leg syndrome, mm-hmm. and she takes medication for some spasms, leg spasms, and now she doesn't. That's good, you see, because that's, that's the real advocates on the low are the people who don't, like, smoke regularly, and this right. is not what they do. Right. So when they go ahead and, like, try the CBD or they go ahead and try some sort of THC product and it works for them, they you see, that those are the best, you know, that's the best, uh, how do you say, witness or t- mm-hmm. testify. Yeah, you know testimony, I mean? is, the testimony best, is the best the best advertising mm-hmm. I can ask for. Alistina, we need to know where this Renaissance woman started her journey at as far as like where you were born and raised here in you know, <laughs> small town New York City. I was uh, born in Mount Sinai Hospital, but I was, I was raised in Left Rock City, so I lived there. Oh, okay, so I was at Left Rock. Yeah, Iraq, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a, mm-hmm. told me that. I was like, Noriega. That's yeah, a, that's Nori. A shout out, okay. shout out to the hood. Um, so, yeah, I, I started out there. Then we moved upstate. I have two children, so we moved upstate and let them do a little growing over there. And now we're back in Harlem. Harlem. Harlem, USA. Harlem, man. baby. Harlem, USA. Oh, yeah. She man. And so, now we are here. Here. So what else do you have now? Plans to um, expand your business now in 2020? How is it that you're going to take over the world, Miss Alistina? I'm trying to offer white uh, private labeling for my products. So a lot of small therapists or therapists that practice privately, like myself, they can't go out and buy stuff wholesale because 
they want you to buy bulk and you're you're a private person, small practice. So you probably have like a few clients a week. You don't need to have large inventory. So I'm going to cater to hopefully I would prefer to cater to that niche market of the individual therapists and let them grow their practice, educate them on CBD and tell them how they could use it and get them to grow their business. That sounds good because it's like you said, you're giving them the total package, not only the product, but also educating them yeah. on how to implement it. Yeah, exactly. You're making um, what people don't know. You see, that's very small and simple, and, and it, but it's very intimate and it re- it really reaches your people. Yeah. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, so you know what I mean? You see this young lady, she's trying to do her own and she's trying to do a thing. That's that's a that information is key, and you made that person just go ahead and grow just because you gave them that information. Yeah, I mean, recently I just had someone hit me on uh, Instagram in a DM and asked me, um, you know, just tell me that they've been following me for a while and this and that. You know, they 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 love what I'm doing this and that. So I said, send me your address and I'll send you over some samples. And they were like so floored, <laughs> they couldn't believe it. They were like, Are you serious? You're gonna send me? I can't believe you answered me back fast and all of this. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, hell yeah, like let's get this, let's go, let's grow. That's it. It's time. That's what this industry. I mean, is not about just right CBD, here. but massage too. Like you know, yeah. it's it's such a hush hush. Both things are such hush hush. Like everybody thinks massage is so sexy. It's not always that. No, and then uh, it's it's a good time to incorporate both of them right now because it's like you know it's it's becoming more mainstream right. and pe- a lot of people already use massage therapy. So now when you're incorporating other things that add value to it. It's a good place to be. Yeah, and I mean, even uh, a lot of healthcare providers are covering massage therapy, so it's definitely a new way to be seen as a, a healthcare. And I wanted to uh, expose our communities to like more natural ways to feel better. That is what the era we are in right now. And yeah, holistic and wellness, natural. Now we ask everybody, Elastina, that comes on the show. What is your first experience with cannabis? The first time you smoke, walk us through that. How oh, you fell in love with that magical plant? <laughs> the first time I got high, then unfortunately, I feel like the first time I got high, I didn't get get real high. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like so, the first time you smoked, yeah, it was like, I was in right? college, you know, and everybody smoked weed, so I was just like, "Fuck it, I want to smoke weed too." Mm-hmm. I've been dying to smoke weed all my life. You know, I grew up with my father smoking heavy in my house and telling me, "You do as I say." not as I do, Mm -hmm. you know, so I never messed with it or nothing. Got to college, everybody was smoking, I was like, I need to get this, I love the smell, you know, Mm -hmm. I used to sit behind people, and when you could smoke in the movie theaters, I'm so my age, but when you could smoke in the movie theaters, (laughs) we used to deliberately sit behind people that smoke weed, because we like the smell so Mm -hmm. bad, right, so... You know, somebody rolled up. I, I I sat with my homeboy, and he he passed me the blunt, and I smoked, and I coughed my brains out, and then I don't think I inhaled properly. So then I stopped, and I was like, yo, could you just tell me specifically? How to do it. <laughs> I need to hear stuff in detail, right? So he told me whatever. And, yeah, I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start becoming, like, frequently after that first encounter? Oh, man, it took a while for that because I was – I, I decided to drink for a while instead, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that In was college. easier, yeah, it was you know. Easier. So then um, I think maybe like around 25 I started smoking heavy. And how did What role do you think it played as far as you mentally, health-wise, once you started smoking? Did it help you? Yeah, man. I, I have – all right, I'm like full of energy. I'm like a mm-hmm. too much. I radiate, right? So I think it was good because I needed to chill out a little bit. Like, I'm always radiating and everybody isn't. So you can't mm. be the only person doing that all the time, you know? <laughs> it gets exhausting, one, and everybody gets sick of it after a while. Uh, so, yeah. help you find a nice balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Then. Definitely. And I mean, like, even now, I smoke way more now than I used to smoke then because weed is just everywhere now. You know what I'm saying? So it's easier for you to get the weed that you need. It's go it's gone way more mainstream now. Yeah. When I was upstate I used to grow it. Okay. Nice. Where upstate where were you? Um first I was in Pleasant Valley, which okay. is way up by Poughkeepsie. And then we mm. were in Monroe, which is right near Woodbury Commons. Woodbury Commons. Woodbury Commons. Yeah. All the New Yorkers know what Woodbury yes, is. Yes, they do. Get on that, that bus. By the way, everybody out there on the boulevard, <laughs> it's like one of the well known uh clothing outlets here in the New York area right yeah so yeah that's where we go yeah 
But I didn't, you know, I'm lucky enough to say that I got to smoke with my parents. So that was okay, kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. cool. Right? Everybody can't say that. And my yeah. daughter got to smoke in a session with me, my dad, my mom, and her. You oh, know? Okay. That's kind of lit. So. That's that's. Passing that's, on the generational right. peace pipe right there. Right. I think that maybe people might not think that's so awesome, but for me, that's a big memory. That's awesome. That's on, awesome. This, on this boulevard, yeah. it's an awesome situation. <laughs> yeah, that was you. a big deal, man. Uh, you know. So. We, we, that, that's a blessing. Yeah, we a family that smokes Ma- together. Imagine smoking with your grandma and your mom and your dad, Ralph. <laughs> right. That's lit. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> And when did you um, learn about all the benefits that CBD bring to the table as far as, like, health and wellness-wise? Well, in 2000, about 2016, because the first year I was trying to use weed heavy. And then I, I was like, I can't, so I need to figure it out. So I started researching, and I broke the plant down further through Google. Thank you, Google. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> figured out that there's CBD and CBG, and you know, so. And I found the isolate, and then I, that was it. I realized that that was the way to go. You know, there's no THC in it at all. So other people who have that fear of being testing positive or getting high or having it in their system don't Mm -hmm. have to have that problem with this product. Although when I can, I would love to use THC because Mm -hmm. I think that it would be even, you know, we all know that it would be better. Mm -hmm. The entourage effect, et cetera. Yeah, and then uh, what happens is like when it goes mainstreams and they narrow it all down, and the whole plant goes completely legal, like CBD is, there's like 22 cannabinoids, so you could use, you could apply all of them mm-hmm. together, and it'll probably be way more effective. Exactly. So there'll be like, you know, it, it'll be levels. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's, it's almost like, like turning it up. Yeah. So you can dial it up, you could dial it back down. Mm-hmm. See, this is important, because what people don't understand is like, there's a lot of like, uh, massage therapists and like body and wellness people that claim and you know about the cbd stuff and blah 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 but they probably only been a massage therapist for like two three years and you know then they got into now cbd and stuff like that so this is like this industry we talk about it all the time like you can be corporate and big and all that shit but if people don't really know you in the culture and they don't feel you they're not really gonna go to you they're not gonna Go trust to use them. your product. You yeah. know what I mean? To use your product. They don't trust you. You yeah. know what I mean? There has so to be some sort deal. of validity behind you, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I think that it's good that I have uh, t- about 20 years in the business that helps the fact that I've been through a lot of products or whatever. But I know I was at an event once and I sat next to another couple. They had a whole bunch of CBD products. I guess they were doing the private labeling from another company or whatever. And they were like, we have a massage oil. I said, oh, that's nice. I also sell a massage oil. Mm-hmm. And they were like, here, try ours. And they squeezed it on my hand, and you could feel it immediately. It was like, right? So Mm -hmm. massage oil is not supposed to go, you know, you're supposed to glide. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, my gosh, this, what is in here? So she showed me the label. And a lot of oils that are made like that are, like, mineral oil in there and sapphire oil. Mm -hmm. That You don't need all of that. And some of those oils clog your pores, and they don't really do what you want them to do. So you're not getting good CBD. You're not actually getting good massage, and you need to really go exfoliate now because your plot, your claws, your plot pores are all clogged Clog. up. So. See, we didn't know that. See, a lot yeah, of people I, don't know that. Right, a lot of also, yeah, because I also did body treatments for a lot of years, also, so body scrubs and um, slimming treatments and things like that. Well, what would you say, um, have you been able to come in contact with a lot of other female entrepreneurs in the cannabis industry or events you attend or anything like that? Um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I ran into a few people. Um, Freaky, you know Freaky, what's her name? She makes the uh, oils. And, Creaky. Um, Creaky. 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 Yes. Creaky yes. products. Yes. Like Vizine. Vizine queen. Vizine. That's a homie. That's a homie. Yeah. That's a homie. Those, Those are the homies. Like Those them. are the homies. That's why I mentioned that because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot yeah. of females doing mm-hmm. their the thing homies. and, you know, entrepreneurs yeah. and CEOs that, are you know, yeah. have their own products and stuff. So Yeah, like I've been to a few women grow events. Okay, those yeah. are people. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Osborne and yeah. all of them. Yeah, yeah nice ladies. Yeah, they're yeah. very welcoming. I love it. Yeah, man. There's a lot of sh- mover and shakers. The mover and shakers in New York City, a lot of them are women, to be honest. So it's like, you know, we, we, we try to show a lot of love. And I feel it. I feel mm-hmm. the love. Mm-hmm. I saw, <laughs> I think I read it somewhere on here that you also came out in other publications aside from New York One. Um... Yeah, like on the uh, internet, uh, Black Star. So it's a online magazine. Did a okay. little thing on me or whatever. 
So you got known out here in these streets, young lady. I'm trying, you know what I mean? trying, and now she on the know? boulevard with I'm us trying, right now. Right. Boulevard. I'm, I'm, I'm where I'm supposed boulevard. to be right now. Right where I'm supposed to be. Where's hot at? <laughs> so what right now is one of your favorite strains that you've been smoking that's really been bringing you some health and wellness? Um, I'm a huge fan of Gorilla Glue 4. So, you know, I was always happy to see it when it's around. And uh, some Girl Scout cookies make me smile. <laughs> so, yeah. And you? Well, right now, you know, I'm really into the indicas because I'm a hyper person like you. Oh, so okay. I like more like the OG cushions and stuff like that. The uh, couch lock joints because I'm too hyper natural. Yeah, see, I don't know. I don't love the indicas. Even though I'm hyper. And then I don't get extra hyper. I just kind of level out. Well, I'm greedy. I like them <laughs> shits all. When it's nighttime, I go hard with the indica. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, depending on. It, I, I'm a smoker. It depends what's available. Right. You know what I mean? The OG's available. We go smoke it at night. Um, in the daytime, sometimes I go old school New York. I like the haze because it's like, it's, it, uh, it's good for the wake and bake. So I could just like. Hit a quick L and keep it moving. Eat breakfast, shower, right. keep it moving. You know what I mean? Like, like nothing ever happened. But I still got the the whole smoking vibe in me, you know, with the wake and bake. But I like it all. Yeah, I do like it all, though. I ain't going to lie. I like it all. I like everything in my weed. Yeah. Mm. It goes down. So we ask right. everybody that comes on the boulevard here if, you know, what you know about Happy Monkey, the brand, like, you know what I mean, everything that embodies that you've heard and you've seen – and you could describe it in one word, what would you say? Um, one word. One Please. word. We one give word people the one sheesh. word. As, then afterwards, you could go in some... Break into, it down, detail? into detail? Okay. Yeah. One word, all right. Give me two one seconds. Word. You have all the seconds in the world. All the seconds in the world. It goes down on the boulevard. I, was, I would say... It's too easy to say happy. You know what I mean? That's too easy. And I... I don't know. Let me see. <laughs> Damn, happy monkey. Y'all putting the pressure on me right now. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> Damn, no pressure. I would say Bud Love, yo. There Bud you go. Love. Nobody ever used that one before. Exactly. Bud Love. Yeah. Why yeah. do you say Bud Love? Because, I mean, just there's, there's love here on this Bud table right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How could you not be in love with that? You that's know, what's up, man. That's, that's what you, we, man. Is, that's what we, uh, we, you know, that's very big for us because that's part of our thing. You know, I mean, yeah. only thing you can't buy in the world is love, and you saying that that's what we want to provide yeah, to the, but the love, people baby. in the community. You know, absolutely, man. Yes. So we definitely appreciate you coming out, taking out your time, your busy schedule, because we know you're a super mom. <laughs> you know, you got your own, you know, company. So you know. We definitely appreciate you taking out your time here. Well, thanks Coming for having me, man. I'm super hyped. No, definitely. It's an honor and a pleasure to have a Renaissance woman entrepreneur like yourself <sighs> thank, thank representing you. for the culture and the minorities, you know, because it's a, definitely a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity going on right now in the industry. So it's good to see people from our communities taking advantage and stepping up to the plate to really, you know, make their mark, you know? Yeah, it is. We got to seize the day. This is it. The time is now. You know Absolutely. what I mean? 2020 Absolutely. vision, new decade. Because everybody has ideas, like me and Romo had, like to say, but you're actually executing on them. And yeah. that's the big difference. You know what I mean? Everybody has ideas, but you got to mix it with the execution. And, and you know, like before, you saw before we had started the podcast, my daughter called me on the phone. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, not for nothing, she keeps me so motivated. It's not even funny. She's always, she's like the best cheerleader ever. She, <laughs> she's always calling me like, Mom, you sure you did this? You, I saw you do this. Why don't you try doing it like this? You know, why don't you look into this? You could repost here, mm -hmm. you know. And I wanted to ask you about that because it's a great thing you just mentioned. You know what I mean? So many people have these stigmas with cannabis, but uh, I want to know your opinion on somebody that's an avid smoker and is still a great mom and still a great entrepreneur, how that doesn't affect, if anything, makes you better at doing whatever you have to do in both. Honestly, I think that it proves to, because my 11-year-old knows that we smoke also, right? So she knows that we all smoke in the house. Mm -hmm. So she knows what it is. And she knows the difference between CBD and cannabis and, and you know. She's educated. Yeah, gummies, all of that jazz, right? Good. So, um, but I think that to keep that a secret and be working in that industry is just blasphemous and hypocritical. And one thing I don't want to do to my kids is be a hypocrite. Mm. 
So I'm not going to tote around something that I think is amazing and then tell her, sh- 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 don't do it, she's here. I- I'm going to explain to her what it is so she's educated too. Mm-hmm. Especially when it's natural it's and organic natural, and it's never right. killed anybody. And I she mean, knows about the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Why would she not know about this? Exactly. And right. that's the whole yeah. thing that people make it legal. awkward when they add all these stigmas to themselves. You exactly. Know? I mean, when I want to go smoke, I'll be like, listen, I'm going to go smoke. I'll be back. And then <laughs> Give me the, a few minutes. And then the biggest right. example why I mentioned the question to you is that it's not stopping you from handling your business as far as work. It's not stopping you from being a great mom. So all these stigmas that people have, like, you know, like your lazy stoner is not true at all it's because so you're natural. fully functional and optimal every day, still handling what you have to handle. Every day. And I smoke every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't mess around. I get my morning blunt, I get my in-betweens, and I get my night blunt. So... Right. It's not like I'm scarcely smoking. I smoke. Mm-hmm. And my kids don't miss a beat. I got meals on the table. I go to work. I have my own schedule. I have to hustle because I work for myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's no time to be talking about I'm smoking uh, and I'm taking a nap. Like, no. that's kind of backwards. And I always preach to my daughter, which is silly, but I know. I tell her that you smoking weed and going to sleep is a waste of your money. Like, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> That's a big waste of money. I was like, go do something first and then take a nap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is great advice right there. <laughs> yeah. Go do something constructive. Yeah, that used to make me mad at them. Like, mm-hmm. you smoking and going right to bed? Nah. Read or something. Write something down. Use anything. That, you, yeah, use that high for something day, creative. Yeah. Something is happening when you're high. So, you know, explore it. Just don't waste it. Well, we want to thank you, darling, for taking out the time to come grace us with your presence here on the boulevard and for enlightening everybody in the community about the health and wellness side of massage therapy and CBD, which a lot of people don't know about and which we're big on. We're big on, you know, bringing people to the light in our community about all the different aspects that the, the opportunities that there are in this business. People are just so consumed with the dispensary, weed, right. bro, this, that, but there's a thousand million things you could do. You just have to find your niche and stick to it, like right. I was telling you earlier. You know what I mean? So it's important for people to know that they have many options aside from the typical just buying and selling and dispensary. There's a lot of other opportunities in this industry. Yeah, definitely. Um, that actually was becoming an issue for me. Like I was getting invited to do a lot of events, and I was grateful for it, but they were more like weed smoker events, right? So that doesn't really go with massage. And yeah. although, I mean, it can, it doesn't, not in an event setting. You know what I mean? So a lot of times it was it was just trying to find the right wellness CBD event to be a part of so that my information was being received and, and you know, purposefully. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, you wanted to make sure that, you know, things don't get misconstrued, that you want to be specific on what you provide right. for the industry and not be looked upon like just like some, you know, some additive or whatever. Right. I want it to be taken seriously. I mean, it's really a health benefit. It's not just a pastime. It it can help you. And that's really what the plan is, a, a better quality of life. Because people really think that you're supposed to live in pain. You know, they're like, oh, I got this bum knee. You don't need to have that, though. (laughs) Don't have the bum knee. Let me help you out real quick, you know? So, yeah. So, definitely, let's definitely, everybody, let's give Miss Alistair Gosign the black Jew that I said over here. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Shalom. Shalom. (laughs) She's not Jewish, everybody. She's... (laughs) She's all the way black, guys. I'm just making fun of her, right? But definitely, that was a pleasure of ours to have someone. And we like to shine light on people. So, everybody, everybody, please go follow her. Tell them where to follow you and where to find you one more time. Instagram, at massage underscore vibes. My website is www.massagevibes.com. And you can also follow me at Elastina underscore LMT. Everybody, today, today, today on the boulevard, we got two special young ladies, young entrepreneurs, dynamic duo coming out straight from New Jersey, everybody. We love to shine the light on anybody who's moving and grooving in the cannabis space. 
And these two young ladies, I've been seeing them grind since we've been grinding, and they are still here and bigger and better. Owners of the Lazy Cafe, you know, um, this young lady is my birthday twin, Miss Blushy, and Miss Mish Mills, everybody. Let's give a round of applause for coming on the boulevard to rock with the Happy Monkey team. Of course. Thank you for having having us. having us. Absolutely. Please reintroduce yourself and let everybody know who you are, what you do, and who you be. Please, favor. Okay, well, I'll start. Yes, yes. First of all, correction, it's the Lazy Leaf Cafe and Bistro. There you go. (laughs) And um, we're in Newark, New Jersey, 17 Academy Street. Definitely come check us out. Grand opening will be 4-20-2020. But I'm Blushy Babes, and um, we're out of New Jersey and my partner. Yes, I'm Mish Mills. I'm the other half of Lazy Leaf Cafe, Yummy Mm -hmm. E.N.T. Check us out, 17 Academy Street, Newark. So welcome to the Boulevard, ladies, where all the people doing amazing things around here stop by and let us know about how they're going to take over the world. Yes, yes. So we got to always ask people, you know what I mean, uh, about the beginning of their journey. So we're going to start it off with something we ask everybody. Um, What was the first time, ladies, that you guys smoked cannabis? First time you got um, so does that story and that journey how you found so in love like with together it? or just like our own experience oh, separate oh okay yeah. well um I was in high school and my best friend shout out to Shadir she's in Delaware yeah. she um was like Tay come here I got some I got some weed for my brother I was like no. it's like <laughs> the guy stole weed from the brother that's it's like up, crap huh? we're gonna die if we smoke this. <laughs> We ended up smoking it. I was, like, waiting for the results. Like, you know, I didn't feel anything, or maybe I did. I don't know. But that was my first experience. How how old were you? Now? No, then. Oh, I was, like, maybe 14. So that's when it all started. Mm -hmm. Maybe 14. You smoke a joint? What was it, in a swish? Um, I think it was a J. I think it was a J, um, because I remember it being small, and we were, like, it was already, like, (laughs) half smoked. So it basically was like a roach. So after (laughs) that, that, when did you get into it deeper and became, like, we like to call it a frequent flyer, meaning, like, that you started getting higher on a regular basis? When did Um, that happen? I think in college. In college, you were off to the races. I think in college, you know, I just... Was smoking weed and it was a way for me to calm and relax in that crazy place. Where did you go? Where did you go to college at? <laughs> um, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. This is a young, mm-hmm. educated yeah. Yeah. woman right here. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I went to school in Maryland. Yep, yep. Shout out to um, shout Maryland. out to be more yep. Maryland <laughs> and all the DMV area. Mm-hmm. Yep. We got a lot of good friends out there. So now, Miss. Mish, please. Mish Mills. Mish Mills. Let us know when my, was the first time you got hot. My smoking experience wasn't really crazy. Like, I was scared <laughs> of it till I was, like, 20. <laughs> I was. How was the first time? It was amazing. I was so high. But Ooh. I was just scared because my mom used to always be like, it's like a huge drug because mm-hmm. she's, like, Jamaican. Oh, we're so, Dominican, you know. mm-hmm. Caribbean. Yeah. That shit is a, we yeah. know mm-hmm. that's the devil. You got, you know, <laughs> exactly. smoking drugs. We know yeah. the whole deal. Yeah. Church, uh-huh. the church, boy. You got the church behind it. Yeah, <laughs> So exactly. walk us through it. How did it go down the first time? Well, I finally just gave in because my sister, she used to always, like, take my aunt's weed. <laughs> Like, she used to climb on the roof and climb through my aunt's window to get to her bed. Damn, it was a mission. It was a it whole was, mission. Oh, man. <laughs> for my poor aunt. <laughs> she used to take all of her weed, and then her and the girl downstairs, Jody, used to smoke it on the side of the house. And I used to be like, you guys are so bad. Like, <laughs> so bad. And then one day, I just, like, gave in. And I smoked with them. Smoked and I the loved joint? It. it was a blunt? What was it? I think it was a Dutch. Uh, yeah, I think Dutch. A mm-hmm. What kind of weed was it? No, I don't remember. I don't just... remember, but it was probably trash. Yeah, most mm-hmm. that's how we all started smoking that backyard boogie, baby mm-hmm. girl. Nobody started smoking. <laughs> nobody started smoking uh, the good stuff right away. Well, uh-huh. I don't know the millennials now. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. The new they, kids, they got it. They, 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 they got it easy. They they coming off of twenty six flavors are. and shit yeah. like that. You know, ice mm-hmm. cream cake and yeah, all of this. We got all <laughs> I'm like, damn, I want to eat it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got all the flavors. We grew up with the uh, dirt. The Jamaican buggy or mm-hmm. the Mexican buggy, or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. So no, when was the I first time y'all spoke that. together, and how did you guys? How did we bring y'all together? I don't even remember the first time we smoked together. 
I don't remember either. Like, like we, we just, just always smoke. <laughs> <laughs> we just be high. Like, we probably were high yeah, already. Yeah, exactly. So, I really don't remember. But we smoked here in the Happy Monkey. Oh, <laughs> that's yes. a lot of that happens. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and we were high as hell. Had yes. a good time. So, how did you guys get together and decide to take this journey together? Yeah, y'all started. Well, y'all did y'all meet? How did that well, happen? originally, uh, Mish was in this business. This is she like a pioneer right here. Mm-hmm. Like, so mm-hmm. I started off with Blushy Babes because my father, Cool Reek, he absolutely, threw, he threw parties. That's or your father. Yeah, that's my father. Yeah, that's the homie. Yeah, that's and the homie. And so also her partner at one point. You know what I mean? So like, it, we were all in the business together. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah, Cool Reek is the super homie. We wanted yeah, to yeah, do yeah, like triple a young OG feminine type of situation. Mm-hmm. So that's how we linked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we it's had like pool parties ladies. and like, yeah, exactly. And you guys just knew sick. that you guys had like a good chemistry yeah. that you could work yeah. together. We yeah, sexy my sister alone. from another mister. Mm-hmm. Like, this is my sister. So. Period. Yeah, we feel like mm-hmm. we know how that shit go, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, we work so well together. Like, I mean, yes. like I said, we are blessed to each other. This, I guess, this new. And uh, cannabis industry and this like this new space that's happening, you know, two years is a long time, right? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of shit happens in two years. In Absolutely. Two years. Yes. So, like I said, I've been watching y'all, and we've been seeing each other from mm-hmm. the beginning. Absolutely. You guys are still here. Mm-hmm. You know yes. I mean? And not only here, you guys been growing. You mm-hmm. went from you know yummy to now. You guys got your own cafe. Mm-hmm. That's, yes. you know, that's a big step. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, we are um, so definitely. Excited. So coming from me, you know what I'm saying. I give you a lot of kudos. Thank you. You know what I mean. A lot of props. We really appreciate y'all that. doing your thing, man. Wait, and to give it back, we loved Happy Monkey. Mm-hmm. I dragged her here. I was like, oh, it's this club in New York. Girl, it's all smoking. <laughs> it's lit. We out. She's like, I'm not going. I'm like, we're going. We're going. And like, we absolutely love the atmosphere. So we appreciate everything you guys, you know, do in the industry. So big ups to you guys too. Yeah. For sure. We all aspire to inspire. Absolutely. So now I want to know the thought process and walk us through the vision and the embodiment of the New Leaf Cafe? The Lazy, Lazy Leaf. Lazy Leaf Cafe, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, Cafe so walk, and Bistro. So walk mm-hmm. us through the vision and the whole mindset behind it and how you guys expect it to look and, and feel. Well, we're iffy right now because we're doing the build-out process. So we're back and forth with a bunch of things right now. So, But we definitely want it to be homey and fun, funky. vibrant, f- funky. Mm-hmm. Just like it's going to be that. A lot of leaves. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of. Love just a loungy, elements. a loungy. We want everyone to like just escape when they come in there. Mm-hmm. Like you know, even from just wallpaper. Like damn, I've been really staring at this wallpaper. Like just take your mind away and just enjoy CBD at the Lazy Leaf Cafe and Bistro. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's gonna be dope. I feel like it's dope already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, and you know how we think, Scorpio, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's gonna yeah, be crazy. So we have a members right. only lounge that's gonna be dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a lot of things is, is changing in Jersey mm-hmm. anyway right now. So it's like a lot of these things are already they've been allowed. It's just it's just weird. They have weird regulations in different counties and different cities. And it's mm-hmm. just awkward. But Jersey's happening, and you know mm-hmm. I think they're on the verge of legalization all the way soon. <sighs> I and can't wait. I think you guys yeah. either way, either or, whatever happens, you guys are already like built a name that. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of how we're in the move, center of it all like it's politicians all around us like we share a building with a bunch of lawyers <laughs> and they love the fact that the cbd cafe is right there mm-hmm. and they're going to be all of our business as well you know mm-hmm. what i mean so like we're just honored and blessed that we're going to be this is woman's month and we're I'm holding a, it down, you I know? must say, you guys picked an interesting day, 420, for the grand opening. Tell us about how you expect that to be. Well, <laughs> it's going to um, be amazing. 420 is 420. Of course. That's the and, and cannabis holiday. We were bl- Everything happens for a reason. The way the place is working, like, it is going to be done ar- for 420. Like, it was just, it's like... The stars aligned for that. Everything mm-hmm. aligned, didn't it? Yes. It was so crazy. So, like, that's it. 
That's where we're going to be at, 420. Yes, if you, yes, if you yes, somebody, yes. you're going to be up in the 420. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. it, the Lazy Leaf. Tell us a little bit about um uh, your experience and your products that involve CBD and why you guys, you know, chose that route and what you feel it does for people in the community and why how you guys got involved in CBD industry and market. What question out of Go ahead, because you um, actually well. cook and everything. <laughs> yeah, like I just... <laughs> she infuses everything. I like infuse she's everything, the yes. she's the chef. Like she's the bistro. She's Mish is the hands on. I gotta watch out when I come over for dinner, Mish. You might yeah, just like, get spiked up, up in there. And <laughs> her roast beef is fucking amazing. Oh my Shout God, out to Ryan. Roast <laughs> beef again. Oh yeah, like she threw down for my uh, grandmother's birthday. She made um, a whole line of food and everyone killed the roast beef. Like, you know how it's like juice in a the corner? They were like <laughs> sopping it. Like, they enjoyed the roast beef so much. So that's that's like the little joke now. But we're yeah, going to have... I started off like cooking a lot of edibles for myself. Okay. You know? And then now we're trying to, you know, do the CBD route as well. Let me so. find out you've been making some f- crazy Jamaican dishes with Everything. spiced up with the cannabis. You suck her yeah, bones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You suck the yeah, bones. Check that out. I might have to go get some infused jerk chicken. Stop playing Hello, with me. Hello, exactly. Right. We have infused jerk chicken wings, and we'll have that at the Lazy Leaf, too. Oh. All of our sauces could be infused. So mm-hmm. it's like jerk chicken, buffalo, mango habanero, ranch, mm-hmm. uh, you know, come, every, we come everything. Over with it's happy it's gonna be staff. so yummy. We having a whole team dinner over We got yes, great please. desserts. Yes. Like, it's, it's gonna be so great. Mm-hmm. We have smoothies, mm-hmm. like milkshakes with the big piece of cake on top. Oh, so yeah. yummy. That's what oh, they're yeah, called. Yeah, cake yeah. shakes. Cake mm-hmm. shakes. Mm-hmm. We also have stuff for, you know, the more healthy people, like you could build your own salad. Stuff like that. Yes, where man. did the stuff chefs? Stuff for vegans. Where, yes. did, where did the cooking skill come from? Mama love. You just had the passion for it. Where did you get this magical golden touch? I just, I always cook. Yeah, yeah, I tell always Carmen. Cook. That's rare because these oh, women God. now. Yeah, tell how you <laughs> love okay, the ladies, first. ladies nowadays don't cook. You gotta. No, you know. she's gonna explain. No, the first time I cooked. Oh my God, she's so annoying. <laughs> you gotta get into detail, but no, it's just the first time I cooked. Like my grandmother, she was sick. She had cancer. I was very young. She wanted me to cook some pork chops. So Jamaican. She, you know, uh, she like yeah. taught me how to cook it from like her. From the bed. Hospice bed, yeah. And then, like, I was rolling. Like, I was cooking every day after that. <laughs> like It was something any, that you felt passionate about. Yeah, oh. anything I wanted, like, I cooked. Like, if I went same, somewhere and I liked it, I would mimic it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. This girl can cook. I got chunky as hell. I got to be the judge of that. I got. I, she's your friend. She's going to no tell more. you. When I taste the food, no, I'm going to tell you what it is. no more. <laughs> Please, people come to the parties just for the food sometimes. Just for like, the mac and cheese. The mac and cheese is a hit. Oh, I yes. need that mac and cheese. It ain't that, that dry meat. shit. This is some good mm-hmm. mac and cheese. Mm. Four cheese mac and cheese. Oh, shit. We need, yes. I need some of that mac and cheese. He ain't got nothing to do with that, but mm. me, I love <laughs> the mac and cheese. Okay, yep. I got you. Hell yeah. But CBD is great. Like, I medicate with CBD. Um, shout out to the ladies. I get really bad menstrual cramps. And this is the only way to help um, soothe my pain. Right. And, like, you know, I've been to doctors, and they've given me, you know, medications and stuff like that. But I realized with CBD, it's more of a relaxing, like, you know, like, on top of I do medicate with THC. And I do have my medicinal card. But, <laughs> I mean, um, CBD is awesome. So, like, and it's legal. You know? Of course. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Now, it's making a big difference mm-hmm. in the community and... Definitely making things more mainstream and opening up the conversation for mainstream America to understand that mm-hmm. this plan is healed to here to heal and to you know make society better and take the edge off of everybody. Everybody's so stressed out. We need to chill, you know. Everybody just mm-hmm. need a, everybody <laughs> just need a blunt. Just smoke. Just smoke. Yeah. 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 Um, we relax. Can better. And what well, me and, and Ramon have noticed that in this industry, that's why it's an honor to have you guys here. It's like. We see so many amazing female entrepreneurs mm-hmm. really doing their thing, and really there's like a lot of you know a lot of women really doing their thing and really making the imprint in this industry. And I'm glad you guys decided to take this journey together because it's like I said, you know, it's uh, it's like uh, more than other industries, you see a lot of female entrepreneurs mm-hmm. in this one. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys that are doing amazing things, you and, know? And, and you Absolutely. guys are doing it East Coast style because you're doing it with a lot of finesse mm-hmm. and a lot of, like, fly mm-hmm. shit. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. You, you present yourself fly. Everything you do is 
very, very fly. Thank you. Thank so, you, yes. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, you're doing it in high heels. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Y'all here in high heels. I mean, and we do. We right, work in high heels. Tables in high heels. We be on the what, you know. five hours? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely. Beat the next day, wow. And shout out to Jersey. We love you guys so much. They 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 support us. And yes, thank you guys. They follow us, and we appreciate them so much. Take a little, a little. Let's talk a little bit about that because the things we go through make us who we are. Where where did you grow up at? You know what area, and you know, give us walk us through well, that so we can understand where you come from and your mentality. I'm originally from Wilmington, Delaware, so that's where all my family on my mom's side is, and um, my dad Corey lives in Jersey. So um, that's how I ended up there. But, um, yeah, you know, I went to high school in Delaware and then college in Maryland. I ended up, um, right after college, moving to Georgia. So I stayed in Atlanta for some time. And um, I have family out there. Um, my aunt lives in Marietta, Georgia. And so um, I have a and a cousin that lives in Marietta, Georgia, too, also. But, yeah, and um, just ended up in Jersey and just been, you know, working. I'm a... Um, I have a legal job as a full-time teacher. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm a um, special education teacher. Oh, so and, renaissance um, woman, you do it all. Yeah, you mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's you really know? for the love. And that's that's passion. Like, I absolutely really love children, the and they love me. And I don't have any children, but they're always like, really oh, you're going to be a great mm-hmm. mother. <laughs> you know, I absolutely love them, and, um, yeah, they're my babies, so. That's what's up, mm-hmm. man. We That's gotta, good. We got to congratulate that. We like to give the flowers here while mm-hmm. people are around. Thank so you. I've been like, hearing yes. that more lately. Shout yeah. out to Ricky. He brought us some flowers the other day. He literally said that quote. So. Yeah, because, yeah, because, you know, it's just like, like you know, nobody mm-hmm. likes to highlight the positive things that right. people are doing now. People like to wait to down the line. Well, you know, it's we the like hates. To, the we the like hates. To, like guess. my mama would say, the hates. <laughs> <laughs> Mish, tell us a little bit about where you grew up at and your upbringing and where you came up at. Okay. Um, I'm Jamaican. Wagwan. What's up? <laughs> 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 and um, I was raised in Summit, New Jersey. I left Summit when I was 17. And I've been, I went to NJCU for a little bit. And then I've just been in Newark since then. Mm-hmm. Just. Raising myself, surviving, Moving making shit happen. Yeah, yeah. Period. Well, hustling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's man. the hardest yeah. working girl I know. Yeah, so period. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, you guys are doing it well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and you know, yes, again, you, you guys even smoke fly. Y'all good. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, y'all making this. Y'all making us look good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As far as like a culture and. You know, people of color. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 a lot, right? They mm-hmm. expect a lot out of us. Yeah. You, know, you know, so you know, you guys are doing it with finesse. Mm-hmm. You know, we we do it a little bit, a little bit rougher. But you you guys no, do it but with finesse. you guys are doing it with finesse as well. <laughs> yeah, right? we're and gonna it's give also you back the compliment. Balance, like she she's more of the like with finesse. Like I'm I'm learning, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm getting with it. You My know, baby's yeah. doing it because a yeah, just a little. But. It goes down. It's all right. <laughs> Period. Mm-hmm. Period. But we're definitely and we doing learning this together. and evolving Absolutely. and progressing. And I love my partner. Good. Yeah. So uh, what, do, what <laughs> do you guys think about the current status of the cannabis industry from when you started, like you told me, four or five years ago to now? What, mm-hmm. do, what do you see different and where do you see it going? Well, no one's original. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it starts there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Originality and is key. Like, I don't want to talk mess, but originality is key. Like, you know, just come up with Listen, your Listen, man, on the themes. boulevard, we talk the mess. We talk I everything, mean, baby girl. <laughs> like Tyra Barbara. Banks says, this you, can, you can take, but make sure when you take it, you fucking kill it. Don't be taking that shit and trashing it up mm-hmm. or looking stupid. Yes. And then it's like, why? Or don't take and then act like you don't forget where you came from. Pay homage. Mm. That's mm. it. That's all you have to do. Mm-hmm. But you know what? That that's a perfect example of why, like, you know what I mean? They really didn't take taken, but they're not because nobody's going to do it like they the, don't people have the, blueprint. That, the people yeah. that really they don't came have the up blueprint. with it or the people that really have their heart in it, you know? They don't mm-hmm. have the blueprint. We don't say anything until it happens now. Yeah. So people be like, what? Mm-hmm. Oh, don't worry. This is what the grind was about. Mm-hmm. You know this what I mean? This is why we made a big deal about this because you guys are making the industry hot, mm-hmm. you know? and. That's and what happened, and that's we had why to, we, we had left. to progress, you know, progress and grow. <laughs> No, but that's what I was trying to say that now, like, you know, you guys are opening this cafe. I'm just trying to say that uh, I just feel like compared to five years ago, especially here on the East Coast, Mm -hmm. there's more opportunities for people like us to do Mm -hmm. positive things when there wasn't as much because it was, like, looked down upon more maybe, Mm -hmm. like, four or five years Mm -hmm. ago. Yeah, absolutely. 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 
Absolutely. I mean, I love the way time has changed. Like, thank you. It's made it easier for me to make this million real quick. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's I'm actually my point. surprised by, like, these people we talk to, you know, like, different ethnicities mm-hmm. and races. We've been talking to businessmen, and they're just, like, so open to it, you know? Right. That's well, when what we I'm got the place, the, um, the landlord, he was like, um, Bring me some brownies. Yeah, you're going to make brownies? <laughs> gonna, you know, like, we gave them things, you know, and, yeah. like, people medicate. Right. You mm-hmm. know, it's more than just smoking with your buddies. The stigma mm-hmm. has to go. Like, mm-hmm. it's really just people need it for anxiety. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, especially you guys live in New York. I will go crazy living uh, here. I couldn't oh, do yeah. Too much yeah. noise. Definitely. Way too much noise. We always say that, you know what I mean? You know, it's all good to have the medicinal part of it mm-hmm. for people to have for ailments, but... Let's be real here. Like, you know, people take over the counter prescription drugs oh. and all this dumb shit to take the edge off. Sometimes you just need the weed to take the edge off. I mean, it's a stressful liquor. life. Yes. And liquor alone. Exactly. Same mm-hmm. thing with liquor. Like, there's one part the medicinal part, but there also is just the part, like, just to take the mm-hmm. edge off of the stresses of life. Mm hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Just general, Everybody needs it. Yeah. Just you let know, the president just allow him to smoke weed. Okay. <laughs> he'll take it. Be, it'll be better. Everything, everything will be alright. Just right. allow him oh to have God. little little things so we can be like, "Yo, you bugging, bro." Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "What?" Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just let him calm down a little bit. I agree. That's hilarious. Speaking about yes. that, right now we're in election year. You know, they're going hard. Soon we're gonna see what happens. You know, if he's gonna continue or somebody else is coming. I'm always do me. I don't care who's in there. Hey, they, that's the right mentality. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unless they're going to come knock on my door and say, here's this check for all this shit back in the day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Back <laughs> I'm gonna in the you, day. I'm going to pay your stuff off. Yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. Do what y'all do. So like. what do you guys think about that? Um, like As far as, like you know what I mean, how they had this war on drugs and cannabis was a big part of it, and they targeted mostly our communities, and now... It's going mainstream, and they're trying to m- marginalize us in the industry a little bit compared mm-hmm. to them, which is crazy because we've been affected by it the exactly. most. What do you guys think about that? Well, that's why we're here. We're two black women, and we're in this industry, and we're here. And mm-hmm. so it's like, see us. Like You're not going to put us in a box. We can have businesses in this industry, and we can make the same money and shake hands and sit at the same seat with you guys. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you'll need to walk over, hopefully, our bridge. You know what I mean? And that's that's how I see it. Like, Mm -hmm. growth is growth. Like, you just got to be hard workers. You got to just work hard. Talk that talk. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) You got the energy to win. That's why you're going to win, baby girl. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's crazy. It's gonna be a lot, a lot of changes happening this year. Absolutely. This year and then next year, because you know, you know, shit, shit happens now. They pass things now. You know, hopefully, but by next year is when you really gonna see the change. You know, it always takes a, you know, a nine month period, mm-hmm. uh, or something like that, for shit to change. But we've seen a lot change just in the last two years. So imagine in the next two years. And that's when mm-hmm. we collab and join forces. Yeah, that's why we gotta just like <laughs> just stay in touch and like Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. You know, that's where a lot of people just, like, fuck, sh- like, like, they fuck up. Mm-hmm. All it takes is just a little bit of communication. It don't, it don't really mm-hmm. take much for a collaboration. Sometimes it's just being in communication that's and knowing it. what's happening over there, you know what's happening over here type of shit. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all it really takes. But yep. people do so much and, they, you know, they, they want so much. They want this, quote, unquote, collaboration. And they just want to kind of, like, take from you. They just yes. want the clout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we were yes. talking about that earlier, that you know, clout you, shit. You, 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 yeah. don't, you don't know what Happy Monkey is. One of, the, one of our sayings is part of our brand Bible. We don't do it for the clout. We do it for the culture. Because too many people are doing it for mm-hmm. the clout. We can't yeah. be that. Uh, yeah. yeah. But you see how it fizzes out when it's for the clout. It fizzes out. It's just not original. Like, you know, like and you're then, not the one writing it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I was telling them, like, I mean, before earlier, we were talking off the record, and it was like um that how, you know, how important it is to show up to all these conferences and all these networking events because unlike other industries that that it's easy to get in through other means, like with this one, 90% of it is showing up and, you know, shaking hands and letting people know mm-hmm. the the people behind the brand, the people behind the cafe, mm-hmm. so they could see that they you know somebody with substance, somebody that you know has a good head on their shoulders, and and, and that helps a lot. You know, that's mm-hmm. what I was mentioning to you guys earlier. Absolutely, yeah. it's important to shake hands for sure. Absolutely, you get yourself out there, and just to know, in general, even if you think 
you don't see a lot of people that look like you in the room, mm-hmm. at least you know the people that don't look like you, you know what they're thinking and mm-hmm. what they're talking about. Because mm-hmm. if you don't, you just go st- you really go stay out the loop. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, they go leave us out the loop. No, you leaving yourself out the loop. Mm-hmm. You don't mm-hmm. put yourself in the loop. Absolutely. There's nobody going to call you for any industry. So imagine this one. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? That's a fact. Yeah, that's why it's important. We, you know, we stick together and definitely, like, Guys are one phone call away, and we are too. So we always, guys, I always say, high tide raises all the boats. We on the, on the same tide. We just on different boats, right. so we gotta support each other. Else, we don't stand Absolutely. a chance, ladies. But it's time for the million dollar question. <laughs> we ask every <laughs> people and person that has come on the show, and y'all gotta answer it separately. So don't try to hit me with the team up thing. Um, <laughs> if you had to describe Happy Monkey, everything you know about it, the brand, the movement, the land, everything you know about it, in one word, uh, tell us the word and why. Miss Blushy. Um. <laughs> you know what? It gave me a, a Cali vibe. So that's two words, but I a thought Cali. Cali. Vibe. Oh, that's the first time I like, heard that one. Because you can indulge, you know what I mean. Like you can smoke. It's it's you're just chilling. Like, Damn, if like, we can make you feel in Cali, all in this rough and tough New York City, we must be doing something yeah, right. Yeah, I enjoyed it, and you know, like it was dope. It was funky. I I I, I love having monkey. Thank you, thank you for those kind words. Now you tell me, Miss Mish. Well, she just said my word, dope. Like it was just dope. I liked it. I had fun. You know, you can indulge. I like that there was multi ethnic people there mm-hmm. you know the music was good the vibes were good everything was just good well if we can impress you I guys we can painted. impress anybody it was glow yeah. in the dark i think yeah. they painted me Security. remember <laughs> did I get painted? oh yeah you did get painted. i was wasted because because it was like a, a after hour and we were we had came from somewhere else yes and i yes. was like oh we out we worked <laughs> and then we went to another place and then we went up there we ended we up there we were done. I'm like, she went to the bathroom and came back painted. <laughs> I was like, oh my we're God. Like, what happened? <laughs> it goes down on the boulevard. It does. <laughs> we're like, do you need another um a job? Remember we wanted to book her for the paint and sip? But who? Wh- Originally. Who was that painter? Wasn't that hmm. Awoken Art? I don't we remember. have so many. We have okay. a bunch of it one of, been, one of them. It could have been, been, been like them, like but we okay. have we have a lot of different ones that have been there, but they were definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. No, it was just like females. No, I remember. Mm. We've been a few times. And I we're always fucked up, like I said. So. Shit, I'm always. <laughs> I don't know. I'm on that cloud too. I think so that I night we had it remember. in our tits. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, so we are really honored and thankful that you honored. guys took out the time to come on the boulevard and rock with us and tell us, you know, tell the world through us about all the amazing things you guys are doing out there in Jersey mm-hmm. and. You know, we really appreciate, you know, having strong, amazing, beautiful women coming to, you know, change the game and leave their imprint and do positive things for the community. I mean, so we appreciate you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Don't forget, 17 Academy That's what I was going to tell you guys. Plug all, your, all the ways for them to contact you, everything. Yes. We're on Instagram, yummy ENT underscore. If you're an artist, we could get you exposed, get you out there. We throw concerts, mm-hmm. all types of things, album release parties. We'll help brand you guys. We so. have a penthouse venue if you would like to throw a nice Elegant. album release party. These <laughs> ladies run New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, Elegant. out there. If you want to get a, if you want to get yeah. a plug, then New Absolutely. Jersey got to talk to them. Absolutely, yeah, and definitely. Plug, so hit us and up. everybody <laughs> has learned that in Jersey nowadays. If you don't, now you know. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, Good. yes. Mm-hmm. One more time on the boulevard. Thank you, ladies. Yo, a round of applause. Thank you for having us. Pulling up to the boulevard. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, you want to, uh, one more time, peace, love, and light to everybody out there in the happy monkey world. So you already know, everybody out there, thank you for always tuning in on the boulevard where you hear it first, what's going on on these cannabis streets so till the next episode everybody wish you nothing but health wealth and happiness peace yes lazy leaf now (laughs) what's good everybody this is your nigga Ralph trying to keep you fresh with the info from Happy Monkey every single podcast you already know what it is if you haven't followed us yet follow us on Instagram at happymonkey underscore 
or Happy Monkey Goodies. Now remember, that's monkey with a U. Also, if you haven't checked us out, we're on YouTube. So check out our channel, Happy Monkey TV. Keep us current, live, everything with the culture.